So uh, the power of inclusiveness. Now, if we go back in the world, say, 30 years, we see that there, was, there were many signs of opening. Walls were coming down. Uh, many initiatives were taken to open up the world, which I think uh, brought many benefits. If we look around the world now, there are many signs of closure. Walls are being constructed. There are many policy measures being taken by many governments, closing borders, closing borders to persons, closing borders to goods. I wonder if I may ask how you see all this? See, uh, yes, it's true you're seeing that as a global situation, but we need to understand this, bringing down walls without bringing down economic disparity is not going to work. <clears throat> when we brought down walls, then itself we should have understood that we must strive to bring down disparity in the world. No man or woman wants to leave their home and go somewhere else to some strange land and live there just for survival. Nobody wants to do that. <laughs> but… but it is uh, estimated that in the next decade, there could be about 1.7 to 1.8 billion people moving or migrating. When that many people start migrating, your wall is not going to work anyway. <laughs> wall… wall will work Wall will work when they're in a few thousands, maybe a million, but when they go to a billion, your wall is not going to work, it's going to be a tragedy because now you see a stream of people coming. Well, can every nation just open up its borders and say, welcome, live on the streets? Not possible, yes? So the thing to do is, which I've been striving to do and I've failed to do is, in the last twenty-five years I've been trying to bring some key people in the world together so that this initially we started as one percent dot com and I try to create a board and every time we are about to do it, some warlike situation comes and some nations back away and it never happened, all right? The idea was just this, one percent of what we invest in our defense forces as we call them, arms and armaments, what we invest, if we contribute and we institute a board of people who are from responsible businesses to be given as soft loans to these businesses to start enterprises in improvised societies where it's not profitable to do business. A business will naturally try to do business where it's most profitable. You cannot ask them to go and do business somewhere in one corner of Asia or Africa because they are looking at their profitability. Essentially, this is… this attitude is because money is expensive. The money is expensive. If you give them a softer money, which is not expensive, for a gestation period of twelve to twenty years and very soft kind of cushion for them to develop an enterprise, develop the talent and create industry and business in improvised societies, the reason for these people to migrate will go. Instead of making that investment, you invest in putting up walls, uh, you will see walls will work to a certain point. I'm not even saying it's wrong because the sovereignty of a nation is essentially determined by the geographic borders. I'm not saying every nation can open up and let people inside, it's not possible to do that. But you will not be able to control it this way, nor is it very humane to do it that way. So the only way is, in some way we must see how economic disparity is lowered. We cannot level it absolutely, it's very, very far away leveling it. But if we strive in the next ten years, if there's enough investments going into various parts of the world from where people are migrating, if you start businesses there, if you start enterprises there, if you start economic activity there, then the need for them to go elsewhere to make a living could be reduced and migrations could be controlled uh, because nobody wants to leave their homeland if they can make a living there. <laughs>